So, you guys find yourselves on the front steps of the cow and grape. And I believe, if my notes are correct, it is evening. Do, 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 do. I think so. Let me just... Yeah, we were just coming back from shopping, yeah. end of the day, <clears throat> settling down. The sun starts to sink below the horizon as you're all standing there looking around, looking for your wayward party members. And there is apparently no sight of them that you can see. People are walking up and down the street. You can hear kind of the clip-clopping of horses every once in a while. But around here, it's mostly footfall as uh, these roads and streets aren't really paved. It's all gravel. You can hear scuffling uh, that lead down to the shores. And off in the distance, you can hear, you know, the clanging of bells. You can hear people yelling at each other down on the shore. It's kind of, it's fairly indistinct, uh, but you can still kind of make out sounds. The smell of the salt, uh, salt air wafting up the streets mingling with the smells of food and warmth and drink and laughter from the tavern uh, the, the sounds of laughter from the tavern and as the sun sinks down below the horizon the lights start to magically illuminate outside of the buildings and you can just see it all up and down the street one by one the lights burst into brilliant flame lighting the front building showing where the doors are you know showing where the the paths are as you look you can see the the lamp posts on the side of the street lighting up as well almost like they've been bewitched and the sun sinks lower and lower and soon sets below the horizon casting the entire city or the entire town into somewhat darkness where those pinpricks of light aren't uh, illuminated So, we open our floor to the players. This would be, for the moment, this would be Ilardis and Yuki. <coughs> so I'm going to turn to look at him after staring up at the sky and be like, Well, that's a thing. How are we going to find her? Uh, we have a six foot tall uh, dire wolf that we can ride to chase after if need be. Roll me an insight check, Elardis, please. First roll of the day. Let's go. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> you fucked it up. <laughs> All I can hear is Marisha Ray going, don't fuck me, girl. <laughs> you, uh, as you're talking about this and as you're mentioning that you know um, a six-foot wolf that you can use to track your gnome friend. You realize that, huh, you don't actually know which way she went. I think I'd probably at this point have to use, uh, or have to have Kiba... Uh, use his nose to try and track at this point. Alright, so roll me... Uh, does, Kiva, does Kiva have scent? <coughs> Sorry, what was that? Does Kiva have scent? I think at this point, probably, since uh, he's been playing around with Gabby a lot, and okay. Gabby's okay. usually with Lobelia. You know what? Roll me perception at advantage because of that. On Kiba, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, roll, roll a perception for Kiba, but I'll, I'll let you roll that at advantage because Kiba would know distinctly what Gabby and both both Gabby and Lobelia smell like. <clears throat> and here off in the distance, I took a bath this morning, guys! Waiting. Sorry, trying to do math. It's a uh, seventeen plus six, so that's twenty-three. Twenty-three. Kiba kind of snuffles around, uh, looking down at the front step of the of the tavern, <laughs> and sniffles, snuffles. You know, nose low to the ground, and then looks up at the sky, and then back at you. And basically, the impression that you get is Labelia was too far up. 
he's not going to be able to track the scent. I just give him a gentle pat on the head and go, you drive, buddy. And he whimpers. So, what are you guys doing? Nico and Vincent both kind of look around, fairly confused for a moment, before Vincent kind of grunts, and he looks at you guys and, well, which way do we want to go? I'm thinking maybe if we split up, we can cover more ground looking for the gnome. It looked like she flew off towards the mountains. Do you really want to try looking through the mountains of an unknown area at night? It might be better to wait till morning. I was actually thinking it would be, be a much better idea if we covered the city first and made sure that she wasn't here somewhere first before we go rushing off into uh, as much as I want to, you know, smash things, uh, as much as I want to mm, get into trouble and all of that. This is odd for me to say, but let's use our brains. You have one? Apparently. Surprise me too. <laughs> okay, so let's check the city tonight. If we don't find her... In the morning, we head off towards the mountains. I suggest we split up into a into uh, pairs, pretty much. Um, we cover more ground in the city. Um, I'll take Nico, uh, Yuki, and uh, Ilaritus are more than welcome to go together if you guys want. And we will meet back here in a couple hours, maybe, and uh, check in. Sure, I'll stick with the pupper. And I'll give Kiba a little scritch on the head. Cool. Um, can I make a perception check to see if there's anywhere that I can uh, get roof access so I can kind of um, get like a good vantage point? Yeah, absolutely. Roll me a perception check, please. Fourteen. How much? Fourteen. 14? Yep. Uh, with a 14, you don't really see much in the way of drain pipes. Um, every once in a while, it looks like there might be a ladder on the side of a building, uh, but they don't look sturdy enough. Uh, it looks like they haven't been maintained in quite a while. Uh, maybe a few years, actually. Years worth of like condensation and snowfall and all of that kind of layering over them. They're fairly rusted, and you walk up and you try and grab one, and one of the bars actually pulls out in your hand. Fuck. Um, damn it, I'm going to jump and attempt the next one. If I have to roll disadvantage, it's fine. Roll me an athletics check. I'm determined. Let's go nat 20 plus 1, so 21. So, you manage to jump up. You grab on to the rung of, uh, one of the rungs on this ladder. And you got this wide grin on your face, because you're remembering cold water and what happened there when you tried to hop up on the roof. And a moment later... That smile falters as the rung lets go. You fall down. Roll me a dexterity saving throw, please. Seventeen. Seventeen? You fall down, managing to land on your feet. And a moment later, as you look up, you watch that entire ladder detach from the side of the building with a deafening crash. Somehow the sides of the ladder managed to miss you. But you're now standing there with this ladder on either side of you. And you're still looking up at it, where it was. 
Can we not break the city, please? I'd ask how the fuck, but honestly, I'm just gonna kind of step over the one side of it and carry on. Hilardis <laughs> is like, I wouldn't hear, I didn't do nothing, I didn't see nothing, you can't prove it. <laughs> Alright, so you step over the ladder. <laughs> with, with that having failed, wh where are you guys going? What are you doing? As you look up and down the street, there's, you know, sort of side streets and whatnot. You can see people coming and going again, the scuffling of feet on the ground and whatnot. People talking kind of animatedly, getting ready for uh, the the upcoming uh, fall festival in, in the city here. And uh, again, the smells of food and drink and the sounds of laughter just kind of punctuate. The sounds kind of punctuate the air every now and then. And the smell of food just kind of wafts down the street. It's enough to make most people's mouths water, almost. Might I suggest we try walking and not climbing roofs? Since the ladder I found decided to break on me, sure. Okay. So, um, where you are standing, you've got the, no the road north, you've got the road that you're standing on goes south, and then there's several side streets to the east and west. Want to head north? Yep, yeah, let's do it. Mm. All right, so as you're heading up this uh, this street, heading uh, just up up a slow incline, uh, almost uh, people have basically built this town on the landscape ish, if that makes sense. It, it follows the natural terrain, and uh, you're kind of walking up the street. I'm going to get you each to roll me a perception check. Seven. Thirteen. Okay. This is what I get from trying to be a fucking badass. Okay. As you guys are looking around and trying to figure out where Labelia may have gone or where Gabby may have gone, again, you're not quite sure, but you eventually stumble upon what looks to be a small blacksmith shop. And you see kind of a, you see a sign uh, out front uh, hanging over it, kind of waving back and forth a little bit as a slight breeze blows it. It's one of those old school signs, you know, like from the medieval uh, era, England, the, the signs that used to hang out in front of the shops, kind of like that. And the sign on it says, the wee tinkers, and below it in smaller letters says, you break it, I fix it. On the other side, you see what appears to be uh, a potential incense shop, and a little further down the road, you see what appears to be a tannery. Um, the incense shop is named, one second, Hayden's Incense, and the tannery is, well, Ella's Tannery. I don't think the tan or that specific tannery was where I went to uh, see about getting Kiba some leather armor. I think that was a different one. Um, that would have been either the Warm Needle or the Nimble Hide. Yeah, I think it was the uh, Warm Needle, I think it was. So, as the sun has set and the street lights kind of flare up and whatnot, and it starts to get a little chillier, the door of the Wee Tinkers opens. And for a moment, you're not quite sure you see, you know, you're not quite sure somebody's actually there. It'd be almost hard to miss them. But as you're looking around and trying to figure out what's going on, you know, who opened the door and whatnot, you see this little tiny creature walk out the door, close it, and then somehow manage to lock it properly. And 
uh, Hig, why don't you describe what they see for this creature? All right. Um, let's see. Do you think you could grab that picture I sent you yesterday and uh, plop it? Did you send in, it to me in uh, the Randall? DM? Yeah. Uh, one moment. I might actually be able to use that for a description myself. Ah, okay. The one with the green hair, right? Yes. Cool. So you see this little creature with uh, kind of uh, almost a mushroom style cap and green flowing locks of hair uh, covering eyes and draping over shoulders, a brown shawl around, or, uh, kind of around the shoulders and white trim both on the neck and the arms. Uh, carrying a book under one hand, uh, you can almost sense or smell the magical energies coming from this book, at least if you have magical uh, aptitude, you can almost smell it coming from this book. Uh, a black belt and what appears to be white short, uh, white, uh, white pants? No, hold on. They're shorts. It's kind of like a there we go. military winter outfit type mm, thing. Brown spotted leggings, uh, about halfway down the legs, just under the knees, turn more into green. Very much nature-esque colors, but also not unreminiscent of winter colors as well. And looks very comfy. They also, you notice that they're carrying what looks to be like a briefcase, but it's out of place for the time given some it's got gauges and things like that sticking out of it um hi there i don't suppose you've seen a giant bat flying by have you excuse me what hmm? Hmm? and the little creature will kind of she startles quite a bit and turns around to look at you. What? Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. You didn't happen to spot a giant bat flying by here, did you? A bat? Oh, we don't have bats here. Yeah, it'd be pretty easy to spot, especially in that case. Roll me an insight check, Hig. Uh, that would be a 21. 21. So they don't really have bats here, like you said. But you do remember kind of an odd fluttering sound earlier. You're not quite sure what it was. You've never really heard anything like it uh, as long as you've been in the city here. Um, you weren't quite sure what to make of it, but you brush it off as, you know, maybe a mage's cloak or may may maybe the magic district was working on something that they kind of lost track of or you're not quite sure. But strange occurrences have been happening here a lot within the last couple of months, so it's not outside the realm of ordinary at the moment. That being said, about a year or two ago, might have turned some heads. Well, I mean, hmm. I did hear something a little odd earlier. Um, how big of a... Is this your pet? Friend of ours, magic item, turns her into a bat. She, um, took off for reasons. And we're trying to track her down. Oh. That is so well. Cool. Well. As I said, no bats here, so, well, your friend should be pretty easy to spot, I suppose. I think I heard it coming from the north. And she's, okay, she kind of like taps her mouth and like all this time that this creature is looking up at you, you, you can't, all you see is hair. Like you, you don't really see their face or anything like that. So, and the voice is so tiny and squeaky, you're not even sure if it's, a female or a male or what well i think i heard the sound go north so and she points towards where north is are we like 
middle of the city, outskirts of the city, somewhere in between. How close to the edge of the city are we? Uh, so you would be closer to the edge of the city uh, that has the ports. Um, you're kind of moving closer towards the middle of the city uh, as you walk up. So, and then I look at Ryzo and be like, well, I guess we start heading northward? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And she puts down her briefcase, opens it, and this thing is bursting with bits and bubbles and things like that. And she starts rifling through it. Aha! Here. Compass. That way, you at least won't get lost. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I guess if we survive looking for our friend, I'll bring this back to you when we come back to the city. Why don't you just describe your compass? What does your compass look like? Um, What's it made it, of? Uh, it looks like it's mm, like a... <laughs> it's kind of a brassy color. Okay. Uh, again, very old-fashioned, but it has an oddly modern flair to it. No, like an uh, like an out of time, like like a not from this time touch to it. It looks old and modern. Does that make sense? Yep. And it, obviously, it's. It's big people sized, so when when they hand it to you, it's like the size of their entire hand. But for you, it would like fit in your palm. Yeah. Would I possibly have seen uh, this person around at all, or is it one of like? Before we did the whole time travel thing, or would it be oh, like insight insight check. Check. Nope, that's a 10. That's a 10? The person, no. The compass, yes. These types of compasses are not unlike those old second-hand ones that new White Rose would have had, uh, or sorry, that White Rose would have had um, for urban explorers. You're not from around here, are you? Oh, figured that out already. It's not like you're from here. Touche. And don't worry about the compass. You can always stop by the shop later. Will do. Thank you for letting us borrow this. Well, good luck with your friend. And if you want help later, you know where the shop is. Thank you. And she'll just kind of wave to you and disappear around the corner. And poof is gone. Awesome. Yes, like literally poof. <laughs> Love it. As this strange little creature disappears. And you guys are left there holding this rather modern compass. You're still not sure where to go. So at this point, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to explore the town in hopes of finding your lost party member. You guys are going to direct me from here, and I am going to describe things for you. Well, let's head north. Okay. Yeah, may as well. Got nothing else to do, and this is the only lead we have. As you move further north, um, you pass by a butcher shop. You pass by a, uh, what appears to be maybe a bowyer, uh, an alchemist shop, and eventually you make your way into the residential district. Uh, houses kind of all crammed together. It looks like they're 
there's not a lot of space here, or at least the houses were kind of shoved together almost haphazardly, but people still seem to be comfortable here. They seem to be enjoying themselves, and every once in a while you can catch the, the smell of like wood smoke coming from maybe a backyard, um, or, you know, issuing forth from a chimney. You can hear laughing coming from inside some of the buildings, and in some cases you can actually hear people singing from inside. Is there anyone just out wandering the street? Mm, roll me a perception check. I'll roll one too. 24, that was a nat 20. Nice, I like it. There are a couple of people actually. Uh, there is what appears to be an elf, uh, a darker skinned elf. There is, and there's a couple of dwarves. Um, there's a couple of fearbulg, and every once in a while you catch a flash of green hair that looks oddly familiar. I'm just gonna go up to the first group and, hi, sorry to bother you. Have you? heard or seen anything weird in the sky maybe a dark shape some weird fluttering anything like that dark shape weird fluttering um do tell what are you looking for my friend used a magic item to turn into a giant bat and we've lost track of her well things have been depressing here for quite some time um Things have been, I don't know if changing is the right word, but there's been odd happenstances, but no fluttering. Dang. Thank you anyway. Sorry to bother you. Come on. Have yourself a good night. Keep warm. It's supposed to be a cold one tonight. You too. Gonna wander down the street a little more, yep. pass a couple more groups, ask the next group the same question. They don't, they haven't really seen anything. Uh, the next group hasn't really seen anything or heard anything. They've been more just kind of hanging out with friends. They've been, um, you know, laughing, chatting it up, um, kind of going for a stroll, uh, kind of a nighttime stroll. The fear bulgs, they don't really talk to you. They just kind of stare at you awkwardly. Well, then... Guess so. Just, um, bye. And I'll just quickly walk past them <laughs> because that was hella awkward. And as you're walking down the street, again, you catch a flash with that green hair. I'm going to follow the green hair. You're going to follow the green hair? I'm going to follow the green hair. So it's not too much longer before you realize... The tiny little creatures following you. Trying to stay out of sight and apparently did not succeed. Uh, excuse me, little green hair mushroom hat person that gave me the compass. Um, why are you following us? Shocked silence for a moment. Literally, that's what the little creature says. <laughs> I'm sorry I saw you? Did this is what I get for living out with humans for so long? I've lost my touch. Roll me an insight check. Me? Uh, no. Uh, Yuki. Uh, and or Elardis, if you if you wish. Nine. Fucking six. Cool. Thank you. I'll make a note. Continue. You guys are good. The little creature will sigh and kind of drag their feet to come stand in sight. Fine. Yes, I was following you. Like you said, I'm not from around here, and you're obviously not from around here either. And, well, 
I'm just curious, and maybe I'd like to help you find your friend. Curious about what? And we'll take all the help we can get. Well, you see, I'm not really from around here. And the little creature will do actual little quotation marks. You know, time was kind of funny when I got here. If you mean, if you get my meaning. Gotcha. And well, I've been here for quite a while and I didn't think I'd ever get to meet anyone from my area of place. Taking a quick look around, where you guys are standing, there doesn't seem to be anybody else around at the moment. Things got awkwardly quiet out here, you guys. I'm gonna slowly reach behind and pull out my bow and then reach behind my hip and slowly grab an arrow. At the do I notice them doing him doing this? I mean you can roll me a perception check. That was more me just saying that the streets are clear if you guys wanted to talk openly, but hey, whatever. <laughs> Well, I rolled a 10 on my perception, so, you know. Yeah, you you rolled a what? 10. Are you guys trying to be sneaky about this at all? Oh, I'm not overly. I'm just kind of being cautious. I would like to not be caught with my pants down. Thank you very much. Well, you managed to notice that... Uh, the elf is grabbing uh, for his bow and an arrow out of the corner of your eye. And the fear bulb seems to be slightly on edge. You two need to settle down. It's just getting dark and cold. Everybody's going home now. Put uh, those away before you scare someone. The last little bit for us has been just back to back us getting into trouble so i got a little paranoid oh, well don't worry i you i'm well known in this town nobody will mess with hig and they know it how long have you been here oh about 15 years i suppose now had the shop for about a decade what happened Oh, it's a long story. But first, let's find your bat friend before somebody shoots it down. Na 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 bat friend. God damn it. So, well, you said she was heading north. Let's keep going that way and hopefully luck out. Moving from the moving through the residential district, the houses start to spread out a little bit and uh, eventually you can see these properties some of these properties are growing like gardens and some of them actually have like livestock out back there's actually a fair bit more room here towards the uh the the edge of the city as you move towards that further edge and eventually it's almost like you know an old country road um with houses spaced out and more than ample room for livestock and a lot of these uh, properties appear to be farmlands on the edge of the city. The roads are not well lit. Uh, they are still dirt and the, you can see that, at least from what you can see, that the road leads out into the wider countryside heading towards the mountain, uh, the mountain range. But there's one mountain in particular, Snowcapped Peak. It looks jagged crawling up the uh, going up the mountain almost menacing and not very friendly and the point comes to what appears to be a very sharp or the the top comes to what appears to be a very sharp point 
and there's almost a sense of foreboding about this mountain. The rest of the countryside seems to be rather peaceful, uh, at least this time of night. You can't really hear much of anything other than, you know, the occasional uh, music or the occasional talking coming from some of the houses, the occasional uh, animal bellow, and cows and all of that, and goats and sheep and all of that. Just an average country road that leads off into a, a rather foreboding looking mountain range. Guys, I really don't think we should be going into the mountains this time of night. We should probably head back to the tavern and meet up with the others. As much as I agree, that's more time that Labelia is out there by themselves. It's not a good idea to go into that mountain tonight. Best to just wait. I'm sorry you about your lost. friends, but we don't have you. You don't have the firepower to go up there. If we get lost or hurt, her and Gabby are screwed. Then, at the very least, you should go get the rest of your friends. Alardis puts the uh, arrow back in the quiver and his bow back on his shoulders and, and like can't fight two against one okay so what are you guys doing let's head back to the tavern and meet up with the others so yeah you guys start making your way uh towards the uh towards the tavern uh, making our way pardon making our way Making your way downtown. Um, as you're making your way back through town, uh, there appears to be a bit of almost action near the center of town. Uh, near the town square, or at least people seem to be heading in that direction. Uh, excited voices and whatnot, and... You make your way past there, back towards the tavern, and it does not, as you get there, as you get to the tavern, it does not appear as if Nico and Vincent are back yet. At least from what you can see. Well, balls. So what do we do if they're not back yet? You want to just go to bed and hope they return by morning? Uh, side note for that um, excitement or whatever that you mentioned, uh, roll the 17 perception. Can I tell what it's about from where we are? Uh, with the excitement, people are starting yeah. to people are starting to prep for the fall festival here. Oh, okay. You you'd know that like you you've been here for what you well you've been in town for what ten years give or take you said fifteen years fifteen years yeah. so you've been in town for about fifteen years this is nothing new to you it happens every year and this is about the time of year where they end up starting to prep you know putting up stalls starting to decorate and a good chunk of the town or at least the regulars um, get together and they all seem to chip in you've been known to help out once or twice but. It's not really your thing, per se. At least I don't think it would be. Uh, that, no. I can leave that up to you. Um, but you've been known to help out once or twice, and people are grateful for the help, but there is no actual requirement to help. It's more just coming together to celebrate, you know, the end of the, the, end of the harvest and the oncoming winter season and get together with family and friends and just have some fun and blow off some steam. Okay, sounds good. You guys are at the ta you, you guys are, you guys are back at the tavern kind of stand uh, you, are you like what are you doing so I'm asking these two you just want to go to bed and hope we meet up with everyone in the morning I feel like we should probably try and find uh, Vincent and Nico at the very least 
how late would you say it is? Like eight, nine o'clock, closer to midnight. Ah, uh, oh, you guys left just as the sun was setting. That'd put about, I guess, uh, supper time, maybe a bit earlier. So yeah, you're looking like mid evening. It's not fairly late. It's not getting towards you know the darker hours or the the later hours. It's more like so. If we were here, it'd be if we were in the real world, it'd be more like yeah, eight or nine o'clock, somewhere around there. How about we wait downstairs, maybe grab a bite to eat or something, see if they come in. If they're not back by midnight, let's go to bed. Because I do not feel comfortable wandering around in a strange town, hoping to run into people that are supposed to be back here anyway. You should listen to the lass. She's smart. And then Hig will just leave you guys and call me when you find your friends. And she goes to the bar and climbs up a stool. The bartender looks at you. The, the tavern keeper kind of looks over, sees your green... Ah, uh, Hig. It's a pleasure to see you again. Are you looking for your usual? You betcha. Double cream, please. Putting it on your tab, or are you paying in cash this time? Oh, I guess I'll pay tonight. Mm. Well, you, you know your you know your tab's always good here. I know you're good for the money and whatnot. I mean, God knows you fixed some leaky pipes for me at uh, one time or another, so. And I'll continue to fix your pipes. <laughs> she kind of giggles. Yeah, <laughs> he smiles. You can just just see the smirk and he rummages around getting a drink ready. And a moment later, it's on the counter beside you. So you guys see the bartender pouring a big glass of heavy cream just like the kind you would cook with and she's just gonna sit there sipping it with a little milk mustache did you want a little flavor in it this evening no not tonight just want the pure fair enough well, as always you know that's <laughs> the more premium so um enjoy i don't get that in often She'll uh, wave her hand over the cup and make the cream warm. Yep. Little legs dangling on the stool. Yep. And a moment later, your tavern keeper is back, uh, tending the the meat on a that's on a spit in the in the back behind the counter there, just over the fire. As always, let me know if you need anything else. Um, who are your friends there? Oh, I wouldn't. Well. They're sort of new chaps in town, and unfortunately, it seems they've lost a fellow. Oh, they lost one of those. Uh, they, they rolled in like a day or two ago, um, looking for rooms and whatnot, but uh, they lost one of their friends? Yeah, something about them changing into a bat and flying out into the mountain. Have you considered the soothsayer? Hmm. I suppose, but they're waiting for some friends. I can always tell them afterwards. Hmm. I mean, she's not cheap, but she is eerily accurate. It's weird. Um, I mean, she also makes a good living at what she does, and she's really good at what she does, so there's no reason she can't charge. Yes. But... Well, I'll let them know. It's their money. That's totally fair. Well, if, uh, if you need anything else, just holler. Yeah. And uh, he falls silent. Kind of lost in thought. What are you guys doing? Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm walking over to the <clears throat> counter and uh, getting some food for myself and a nice uh, T-bone steak for Giba. Yeah, so the uh, the the tavern keeper kind of looks up at you. Hmm. Uh, and uh, anything else? Uh, what are you looking for food for yourself? I think I've got one last T-bone steak. I'll have to bring in more. I'll have to bring in more steaks. But uh, what are you looking for for yourself? Just anything that's readily available. I'm not picky right now. Is this going to count as one of your daily meals, or is this going to count outside of that? 
And I think this might count as one of the dailies. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, we've got more of that stew that you had, uh, I think it was last night. Um, we've got some, we've got a meat and cheese platter, um, and I can make up, uh, not a meat sandwich, but, uh, I guess it would be considered a meat sandwich, um, with some different fixings if you want. Uh, it's up to you. We have options tonight. I'll just take the meat and cheese platter, and if you've got a small loaf of bread, I'll take that too. Yeah, uh, well, the meat and cheese platter comes with a small chunk of bread on the side. And makes it uh, better to, you know, swallow with. So, um, yeah, that, give me give me about five, ten minutes, and I'll have, that, I'll have that over for you. I'll come and drop it off at your table. Okay, awesome. I'm going to grab Kiba and go find a table and sit down. Yeah. Yuki. Can I also have a meat and cheese platter, maybe with some fruit, too? Uh, yeah, the fruit doesn't normally come with the platter. That'll be a bit extra if you're, uh, if you're down That's for it. Fine. Okay. Uh, so the fruit, given that it's fall, uh, or moving towards fall and whatnot, and fruit's a little harder to come by up here, a lot of it has to be imported. Uh, the fruit on the side's probably going to be about five silver. Yep, that is reasonable. Again, he says uh, he'll have it out in about five, ten minutes, and he'll actually drop it off at your table for you. Uh, do you know how many apples there are in fall? That is like the entire consistency of the fruit. Not here. <gasps> Remember, we're up in the Sacrilege. north. Sacrilege. Down around Raven's Loft, it might have been during the winter, but up here, once fall hits, it's way too cold to grow anything. I'm going to go join Rizo, and I am going to attempt to use sending to message Lavelia and basically just be like, where the fuck are you? Okay. So, are you actually casting your spell? Yeah, as soon as I find it. Okay. You cast that, and yeah, let me know when, let me know when you're good. I'm actually drawing something, and this is basically what you're going to see if you successfully cast sending. We're well, gonna, we're one, gonna, we're one, gonna find one it. Well, one, one, one it's sec. just I send a message to a creature I'm familiar with. You hear it in your head. There's like, there's no rules for this. It just happens. So, in your head, all you're gonna hear, assuming you are conscious, is my voice going, "Where the fuck are you?" You can reply to this message. Up to twenty-five words. But you don't have to use the full 25 words. So that would be up to Labelia whether or not she chooses to respond. Have you cast it? Yep. So you cast Sending. Labelia. You hear Yuki's irate voice. Do you respond? All you, yeah. All you hear back is, "I'm going to fucking kill them." <laughs> and the spell cuts off. I'm going to send it again. Labelia. So this time you're gonna hear. Don't completely go John Wick on them. You're going to need people alive to question. Where are you? Labelia? I'm going to fucking kill them all. <laughs> just, you hear the words, and then a moment later, just this raw seething anger washes over you and accompanies the words final sending <laughs> well that was fucking useless where are you we want to help labelia i 
Hold on, I need I need to write down how many words this is. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, crap. Damn it. Okay, I need to I need to cut down on some insults. <laughs> oh, make it a good one. Make it a good one. Hmm. What you got? These goddamn bastards think they can take my dog without consequences! And again, that raw seething rage, which shouldn't be possible with sending, washes over you and you can almost taste it. Tastes like unforgiving. <laughs> We're going to take a 15 minute break. We'll be back at 20 after the hour, folks. I uh, hope you are enjoying this role playing session and uh, we will move on with the party uh, and find out whether or not they're actually going to find Labelia. So um, stay tuned. More to come. We'll be back in 15. So we're going to take a moment here. Um, we're going to do a quick check in. Uh, Critter. Yes. Nappy. Yeah. Uh, Jules Stein. I'm off destroying all its people that took my dog. You're not wrong. Rizzo. In the kitchen. Cool. Well. You guys are back at the tavern just trying to figure out what you're going to be doing with in regards to trying to find Labelia, it seems like Yuki is almost torn between staying... Uh, it seems like Yuki wants to wait here until uh, until Vincent and Nico come back. Um, Elardis, it sounds like, wants to go look for Labelia on account of don't want her wandering around, you know, weird, pl uh, strange places uh, without the group. And Higgs just kind of along for the ride. Well, Hig hasn't, yeah, Hig is drawn to these people because they have potential answers. Okay. So, Hig, you were sitting up at the counter uh, of the tavern, the, the front counter where the, where the tavern keeper is, and you're sipping at your cream, your warmed up cream. And uh, Ilardis and then Yuki both walk up and order the meat and cheese platter, and you know, a few minutes later, uh, the, the tavern keeper brings out the meat and cheese platter and uh, places it on the table where Yuki and Ilardis are sitting. It's a fairly, it's not overly busy tonight uh, at the moment. Um, so there's kind of lots of tables around, but they just kind of, they pull up seats at the table. They start, you know, eating and uh, the tavern keeper brings out uh, Stega's, sorry, it's not T-bone, uh, but it's the best I could find. Um, Turns out I was mistaken. I didn't actually have a T-bone. I think you got the, the last one I had uh, the other night, uh, last night. Uh, I'll make sure to order some more of those for you, uh, but this is the best I've got for now. And he looks really apologetic. And, uh, Hig, you're just kind of sitting there watching these folks. What are you doing other than just sitting there watching these folks? I'm, I'm currently the, trying to look for some rules here. Mm -hmm. um, Excuse you. Hig wants to help um, in the hopes that, you know, like by helping, they will help her in return. Um, so she's trying to think of a way to, um, of what she could make to help them mm -hmm. find their friend and stuff. What? So uh, she will, I guess, uh, set her cup aside mm -hmm. and pull out the. Uh, the big briefcase that she's been carrying with all the gauges and stuff mm -hmm. and just kind of open it up in the counter and start rifling through everything just kind of muttering and like you know picking up a piece throwing it picking up another one looking at it for a while she's gonna do this for a bit mm -hmm. little feet just like the more she's thinking the faster the little feet go mm -hmm. on the stool yep 
So you're thinking through all these things, you pull out the briefcase, and you're kind of rummaging around. And whatnot. And, um, again, the tavern's fairly quiet. Uh, what are Yuki and, uh, Ilardis doing? Oh, stuffing my face between slightly argumentative, I'm not telling you where I am comments. <laughs> Ilardis? I'm just eating away and, uh, making dirt. Periodically looking over it or looking down at Kiba to make sure he doesn't choke on the uh, T bone, since I know we can essentially chew an entire bone to dust and then just like swallow it, anyways. No, he uh, Kiba's slowly working his way through the through the steak and whatnot, and he looks fairly happy. Um, he just kind of yips every now and then. He doesn't really. He's actually taking his time with this one. Such a good boy. You just kind of in response. So, so after a little bit, Hague is gonna kind of throw everything down and huff. Nothing's here is going to work, and she so she looks up at the two. So there, it's an elf and. A fear ball, seven foot. Oh my goodness! So yeah. up, really high. Yep. And because it's very crowded, it's gonna have to be vague. Not crowded. Uh, it's sorry. It's fairly slow this uh, right now. Um, oh, okay. There's not many people in there, which means there's a fair bit of space in the tavern. Uh, is the bartender close by, or he's off? Um probably about 10 15 feet behind the counter again minding the meat over the spit making sure it doesn't burn um all right, let's, I'm trying to the table that these two are sitting at it's probably again another 10 to 15 feet so all said and done if you were to get up and walk over to them be about 30 feet away from the bartender okay well that's gonna take me a little bit to do because I only have a walking speed of 25. Yeah. So, uh, she's gonna make her way over, mm -hmm. like, pack all her shit, grab her cup, and go join them at the table. Yep. And eventually climb up. Onto an empty chair, yep. And just kind of slam all her stuff down. Thud! As these two are eating. You just hear this thud! Gonna jump a little. And as you look over, your new companion is just kind of climbing up into the chair, slamming things down onto the table. Um, hi. Hi. So, I've been trying to think of what I could do to help you folk with finding your friend and everything else. But nothing I have here is going to work. Now, I had been hoping that maybe you would have something from back home. You know, like maybe a phone. Was it just Vincent that had the phone or was it all of us had phones? You each brought your devices with you. Unfortunately, they don't have a charge to them anymore. They are pretty much dead at this point. We've got our phones, but, you know, lack of chargers, they are dead as a door now. And the, the little creature kind of squeals. I'm not going to do this to your ears, guys. Don't worry. But she squeals something fierce. Like, very excitement. And um, just kind of jumps up on the table. Oh, it, it, I can fix it. I can fix them. If we go to my shop, I can fix them. You can make these things work in this time period? Yes, yes, yes. I can make it work. I can make it work. And she's just like, the more excited she is, the faster she's talking. And she's kind of like, eat, 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 quick. We have to go back to the shop. Deal. No, I'll just start shoveling food in my face. 
So I, <clears throat> I have a question, like a in general kind of a question, and it's more or less just so that I'm not being stupid. Um, around the mountains, there's like a forest range kind of area around them, right? Or is it basically just city and then outskirts of the cities, kind of like barren and then mountain range? Are you asking me or are you asking Hig? Uh, I guess anyone who would know really. Uh, you, I guess. You're asking me? Yes. Cool. One moment, please. Do, 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 do. Uh, you are going to roll me. You're not going to roll me anything. You're not sure. Hig, however, might know. Uh, I mean, I, I guess you would like me to roll for it to see what I can give him? Yeah, I'll get, uh, this is kind of a gimme because you've been around here for so long. Yeah. The base of the mountain has a very sparse forest around it. It's not the greatest. Um, but there, there are, you know, a few trees here and there that kind of line the base of the mountain. Uh, but as you get closer, the, the ground becomes, you know, rockier and a little more inhospitable towards those types of plant life. No, I, Hig will relay that information while also quickly telling him to shove food in his mouth hole. Why do you want to know? I get... Uh, <clears throat> um, I guess think of it as um, home turf advantage when it comes to uh, foresty areas. Mm -hmm. So, you guys eventually manage to finish your food amidst uh, on-again, off-again conversation. And your platters sit empty on the table. And I mean, the bean had a bit of a bit of a kick to it. It's not overly that spicy, but there was there was a fair bit of flavor to it. The cheeses were uh, fairly sharp and flavorful, and the bread was just the perfect thing to, uh, I guess, finish it off with. And Hig is sitting there looking expectantly at you. Gonna let out a small burp and be like, "Okay, let's go to the shop." And Hig will actually like, <laughs> so Hig will be standing on the. She's standing on the table. She's gonna put like arm on one side, hand point one finger towards pointing towards the door, and just very excitedly say, "To the shop!" And uh, it's not long after you guys find yourselves standing outside of Hig's shop. Uh, one second. The wee tinkers. The sign again, gently swinging back and forth in the wind, in the in, in the gentle breeze. So I'm just gonna quickly unlock the door, mm -hmm. usher everybody in. So describe the inside of the shop for me, will you? Your shop. <clears throat> so you could tell that it's used to be more like a forge. Mm -hmm. That's sort of been refurbished into uh, fix it all. So there's space where you could tell items that are already pre made, but it's little tinkering toys, things for kids, that sort of thing. And then, like you can tell in one area of the shop, it's more just a giant pile of all the stuff that's waiting to be fixed. And there's a little bit of everything from weapons to you know, like their version of appliances, basically. Um, lots of like music boxes, knickknacks, tons of those little compasses. And uh, as you walk in, there's some muttering from amongst one of the piles. And then the muttering stops as the door opens. And you hear kind of a gruff voice. That you, Hig? Eltem, yes, yes. You're still here. I told you to go home. Awful late for you to be back at the shop, isn't it? You didn't think these things were going to fix themselves, did you? Oh, watch it. Anyway, 
I've got business. That's why I'm here. Hmm. What kind of business? Anything you need help with? No, no, I'll be fine. You keep working on that. Hmm. All right. A moment later, you hear just kind of, again, that muttering and every once in a while, some sort of, what you're sure is probably a swear word in Dwarven? he's way too involved, whoever this is, is way too involved with what they're doing and kind of not paying attention to their surroundings. So Hig will turn back to uh, the other two. He's like, it's Heltum. He's, uh, well, I guess you could say he's my apprentice. You see, the shop, it's kind of doing rather well, and I just, I ended up needing help. Mm -hmm. But he'll mind his business. Dwarves are like that. Once he's got a project, he'll be gone for a while. I just kind of snicker at the uh, dwarvish swear words because I know exactly what he's saying. Eltum kind of pauses as you're talking to these folks. Well, it's not like I was going to go mining. I mean, I'm better at fixing things than I am at fucking uh, dragging fucking, you know, ore out of the side of a goddamn mountain. I really don't blame you, dude. Unfortunately, that's also made me a bit of an outcast, but what you gonna do? Fucking mood. You do you. Do what makes you happy. So, hey, your shop. So I'm going to, so uh, I'm, you're led through like to the very back of the shop. Mm -hmm. uh, and the deeper you go in there, the more cluttered it gets. And eventually you're led to kind of like a, a Higgs private workshop, essentially. It's in the back of what used to be the forge. So you still see like the blazing fire, which is always on. Um, you could tell like this is basically where Hig lives as well. Like there's a little cot and everything. Lots of plants and shit like that everywhere. And uh, she's going to go just right to a big old workbench. Uh, has like a big stool and just climb her way back there and then turn come on give give me give me give me give me give me give me, give me. and her little hands will just like be out in the air clutching i'll pass her my phone okay so you've got you've got one phone excited squirt squeal you artist me give me give me give me give me yeah, I kind of rifle into one of my pockets and gingerly hand it to them. Okay, one moment. Uh, so, Hig, what are you doing? Um, so she's gonna uh, just examine them for a while, mm -hmm. see how f much she remembers of whatever these particular like models are or whatever, and it's gonna start. Um, working out a way to give them a temporary fix. So I want you to roll me a perception check. Um, who? A uh, Hig. That would be a 19. So these models aren't models that you are familiar with. Um, these models are something both more advanced and yet not at the same time. It's almost like technology took a completely different turn. Um, but you're pretty sure you can still work with it. And it, have you ever watched Earth Final Conflict? Yes. You know the personal communications devices they have? Yes. That's what I base them on. So okay. th that's effectively what you're looking at. So it's not like a phone. It's more like those. The technology is both more advanced and yet at the same time seems like it might have backslid just a touch and taken a completely different route. And you'll see Hig will actually like start scratching, like take starts taking off the hat, the coat, and you'll notice their hair is filled with like bobbles and things that look almost like almost like butterfly wings almost that are just kind of sticking out all over the place, some twigs. There might even be, like, a little screwdriver in there. <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of scratching her head, like, oh, I'm, I'm not familiar with these. This is going to take me some time. 
and she just she starts waving her um hand like she's shooing you guys away this is gonna take me some time go make yourself comfortable there's tea in the kitchen okay um guess i'll go fiddle with making tea so and i believe i can uh so with um um so with tinker's tools i can also do um I guess start off with investigation. Yeah, roll me an, inve roll me an investigation check. That'll work. Seventeen. Yeah. So, despite the fact that these devices are not something that you're used to or that you're familiar with, you find that the inner workings, for the most part are almost the same there's variations here and there and there's other technology here and there in some cases the technology has been mingled with um crystals almost like it's channeling magical energies they in the, it's what allows the technology to work inside pockets of ma uh, basically m magical pocket areas um there seems to be some sort of shielding over it and you are easily able to identify you know where the problems are within these uh within these devices uh you cut out a little bit so i didn't hear it, when you're able to easily identify where the problem areas are within these devices and you're able to find out you know where they charge through and you're able to find out um how they hold a charge and they've it almost looks like they've blended technology and magical crystals, which is something that wasn't around when you were, um, it's not something that was around when you were there. Huh. Okay. So she's, so Hig is fascinated. Actually, you will hear fascinating. <laughs> um, because I'm a nerd. Um, and uh, she's going to go about seeing what she could do to, I guess, recharge the crystals with her own magic. Mm. Roll me an Arcana check and roll me an Investigation check. Uh, no, Performance, rather. Uh, sure, just give me a second. Actually, hold on. Arcana, investigation, and performance. Roll me all three. Okay. <coughs> okay, so... <laughs> Apparently I clicked intimidation instead of investigation. Hold on. Sorry, just re-roll it. A little better. All right, so that's a 10 on Arcana, a 21 on Performance, and an 8 on Investigation. Okay, so your Investigation doesn't quite pan out, but between your Arcana and your Performance checks, you realize that you've actually seen these crystals here and now, and it just needs a slight tweaking in order to make crystal in order to replace and make the crystals work and you actually have a few lying around the shop and with a slight modification and maybe a mm, t a bit of tinkering uh, shouldn't take you too long you might be able to actually rig up and uh, not the most proficient but a rudimentary solar charger for these things awesome uh i think that will take me some time to put together though hold on yep. let me see well your briefcase if i'm not mistaken is basically a portable lab yes yes it's basically like where i keep all my components and shit it'll probably take you a couple of weeks to gather the supplies that you need you have at least like this like i said the crystals but it'll take you probably a couple of weeks to gather uh, to gather all the supplies and materials that you need but eventually you will be able to make these things functional again can i cobble enough together to at least make these two work temporarily uh ch -ch -ch. roll me 
normally like Tinker's tools, most of the creations I can make, a lot of them only last for like 24 hours and then I have to remake them. You might be able to cobble together. Uh, roll me an intelligence check. Uh, that's at the top? Yeah. That's 11. You almost have all of the supplies you need, but you can't find everything that you need. So you'll have to explore around and like, you'll have to go out and actually gather supplies. Um, okay. Unfortunately, you don't know if any of the shops here in town actually sell the supplies that you need. Yeah, I'll have to wait till the morning. Yeah. Okay. So you guys will hear a little, like after I guess a couple hours, I suppose it'll take me to figure all this out. Yep. And I'll eventually come stomping out, looking vexed. Well, I guess you can't tell because the hair's in the way. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so Hig will come puttering out of the shop, kind of dragging the feet, and start making their own little cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Everything okay? Well... There's some good news and some bad news. You mean the good first? Well, I can fix your phones. Even give you chargers that you'll be able to use. That's great news. Unfortunately, I don't have the components. That's I can maybe right cobble news. something together for the two of you tomorrow <laughs> if I'm lucky. But I don't think any of the shops, it might take a few weeks. Well done. You hear, um, uh, one second. Eltham? Yeah, thank you. Let's speak up. Mm. Jover find, uh, did you ever manage to um, find the owner of that quiver that we've been holding on to for the last few months? No, you can put that one on the shelf. Might as well sell it now. Hmm. He just kind of looks around. You like these guys? Yeah, they've been quiver. nice folk. Sorry, what was that, Hig? I said, yes, they've been nice folk. Hmm. Where'd you meet them? Ah, uh, they lost their friend. They're from my uh, homeland. How much would you say that quiver's worth? Mm, how much? Uh, how much was he paying you to do that? I don't know how much was he. You can't remember. So uh, ah, I don't know. You do know he paid up front though, and he just never came back. It's already paid for it anyway. Oh. It'll be in the books if you really want to know. Mm -hmm. So if he's not coming back, if he hasn't come back in a couple of months, chances are he forgot about it. He left no contact information. Mm, happens all the time. Could be dead too. You just see this red-haired, bedraggled-looking dwarf poke his head out from between stacks of uh, just things that need to be fixed. Elf, huh? Yes, yes. Now, don't start any trouble. Oh, I have no issues with elves. You should know that by now. I'm just thinking. Bow and a quiver. You a hunter? Something like that. Uh, let me see your quiver. I mean, unbuckles. His belt is... Kind of like a, with how we put it, it's kind of like a two part. Mm -hmm. It unclips um, the top part and then just reaches around behind the quiver that's sitting on the small of his back, mm -hmm. rolls it, and then the rest of the top part of the belt comes free mm -hmm. and then hands it to him with a couple of arrows still in it. Mm. Capacity? 
I'd say about 20. I think I've got about four or five left in there. Hmm. Well, it looks like uh, standard issue. Where'd you get it? He kind of looks down and looks at the quiver and says, a mentor of mine gave it to me. Looks like it's at, looks like it's uh, seen its fair share of use. Aye, looks like it could use a little bit of a polish. Hmm. Pretty primitive, though, if you ask me. Most quivers these days. Uh... <sighs> what do you think? Upgrade time. He looks basically right over at Hig. Well. I mean, just because something's old doesn't mean it's not good. <clears throat> but yes, I, I suppose. I was thinking something. It's little, up to him. I was thinking something a little more. It's got a little bit more of a kick to it. Again, it's up to the elf. And at that, and the, the, I was looking up. And the dwarf literally turns to look at you with an eyebrow cocked. As long as it doesn't get damaged. It's got sentimental value to me. Uh, well, we can get let you keep we 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 won't be taking this one. Uh we won't be touching this one. Uh the materials are foreign. I don't know what the materials are made of, but or I don't know what the materials that the quiver's made of are, but we were thinking. I I was thinking. That quiver's already been paid for. Dude's not coming back. And you look like you could use an upgrade, so what do you think? Sure, why not? He'll uh, m duck back into between his piles of junk, and a moment later he'll pop back out, you know, fully standing up this time. Stands probably about four or five feet tall. And in his hand is a pure black quiver with red trim. looking almost brand new and he hands it over to you this quiver is fully stocked with arrows he grabs it and holds it in his hand kind of moves it around a little bit and here's the slight um arrow one arrow the sound, uh -huh, the uh -huh. light little clicks, and says, yes, yeah, should definitely uh, do quite well for what I need. As you take the quiver in your hand, your hand tingles a little bit. Almost like there's some sort of warmth transferring from the quiver to your hand. And the dwarf looks up at you and says, this quiver here... It's got a replenishing spell on it, which means you're not going to have to shop for arrows. You'll always have a full quiver, but there's more. This quiver is also enchanted with a spell storing spell. You can hold up to three spell levels worth of spells. It means three level ones, one level two and a level one, or one level three. But you can choose when to activate the spell and on which arrow you choose to activate the spell. Every arrow in here has the potential to channel that spell but you can choose when to activate it and on what arrow. I'm going to look at him and be like, hey, hey, you want fire arrows? His eyes just go really wide. And, and he's just like, oh my god, so many uses. So many uses, and he's just like, he's staring at the quiver now, and he's just like, you know, just muttering so many uses, so many uses, so many uses. I think someone's in love. The, tra the trade-off is, you'll have to spend probably, uh, you'll have to spend about 24 hours sometime inside of a week uh, attuning to this thing, making sure that it works for you properly. And I would suggest testing it before you actually take it into battle, just to make sure that everything works right, but... Um... It's yours if you want it. 
as uh, as he's saying or uttering um it's yours if you want it he's already putting the belt into the loop for it and trying to put it where his uh, old quiver was so as you uh as you don it the quiver almost seems to be molding itself to fit you properly oh and yes automatic sizing too wonderful thing um did you want your old quiver For sentimental value, yes, or at the very least, actually, he um, points at a emblem that's emblazoned on it. If you can manage to take that off and possibly put it on to this one, and he takes the new quiver back off again and puts it on the counter. If you can manage to put that emblem on to this quiver, you've got yourself a deal. What's that emblem made of? Just uh, a regular metal that uh, you can find pretty much anywhere, but it's been crafted by elves. What kind of metal? Steel. Hmm. Steel, huh? What's it held on by? Uh, leather, mostly, anyways. I have to be AFK for a second. Okay. So he kind of looks at it, studies it for a moment. And you can see the gears kind of turning in his head. And he starts to mutter something under his breath. And a couple of minutes later, he snaps his fingers. And the emblem jumps from the old quiver to the new one. And affixes itself. Uh, you mean like that? Exactly like that. Now you can do whatever you want with the quiver. Mm. Well, I mean, give me something else to work on, I suppose, and see what I can do with it. If you're sure you don't want it. And he takes the quiver and disappears back amongst the pile. Um, I'm just gonna take one of the arrows out and, and study it mm -hmm. and look over at the, uh, arrows from my old quiver and being like, oh, these are gonna be really good. You just hear a chuckle from, from between the piles and the dwarf kind of laughing. So, with that, Hig is not quite able to make your phones work at the moment, but they will be working on it. Ilardis has a new arrow, a new, a new quiver full of uh, arrows, complete with a couple of enchantments on it. Yuki, what are you thinking at the moment? What are you doing? What are you, uh, how are you reacting? Like, what do you want to do? Paint the scene for me. Oh, uh, she's AFK at the moment. She'll oh. be back in a sec. Okay, so we're going to take a, just a quick break here, guys. Uh, we will be right back. Bear with us. Um, we'll see you in probably about five to ten minutes, I guess. And uh, we will resume when we get back. We return. Welcome back. So, you have acquired this quiver. Um... You guys have found out that Hig uh, can repair your phones, but it's probably going to take some time to gather the supplies. So, what are you guys doing? It took Hig a couple hours of tinkering, right? So, it's probably around midnight. I'm getting tired. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to suggest going back to the inn, mm -hmm. or I'm going to pull up some floor and pass out. Uh, one moment. Uh, all right, so as you, uh, so Yuki is suggesting that you can, that you all head back to the tavern. Uh, 
Gallardus? Hig? Sorry, we're still chewing. Yeah, may as well head back to the tavern then and get some meditation in. Okay. So, uh, I want uh, Hig, I want Ilardis, and I want uh, Yuki to roll me perception checks. Twelve. Twelve as well. Eight! Awesome. So, Hig and Yuki, as you are, as you three are walking down the street, you notice outside of the tavern that uh, Nico and Vincent have returned and they are standing there waiting for you. And as you walk down the street, Nico just kind of waves a little bit and Vincent looks really grumpy. As you draw closer, he hasn't really found, he, he mentions that they, they didn't really find anything they over the last couple of hours and that their search turned up unfortunately empty. And then he stops mid-sentence and he looks behind you as you guys are walking down the street, and there comes Labelia trotting down the road, holding Gabby in her arms. Both of them look a, uh, they look fairly beat up, and Labelia looks like she's coming down from seeing just absolute red, absolute red. I'm gonna look at her and go, "Where the hell have you been?" Hey, that's Abby. Hey, guys. She's gonna trot over with a very noticeable limp. Yep. And a couple of, Sorry about that. A couple of cuts, a couple of scrapes, and all that. Um, you look like you've at least had fun. Oh, not nothing, not nothing I can sleep off, you know? I'll be fine. I'm still gonna tear wounds her. You're still gonna what? Cure wounds her for seventeen. Cool. So your your cuts and your scrapes start to um, stitch themselves back together, and you're starting to feel a little more oh, rejuvenated, yeah. but still still fairly tired. I am I am so sore and tired right now. I I could use a drink and one hell of a sleep. Vincent and Nico just kind of look at you, not really saying much, and letting you know Yuki say what she's got to. For sure. Let's do the bed. And Vincent and Nico turn to head into the tavern, and I would like Labelia to please roll me a perception check as uh, you guys are all just kind of standing there looking at this little gnome that is quickly approaching the party. 16 plus 2, 18. 16 plus 2 for 18. You happen to look up over the party for just a moment and as you are looking around kind of your ear wounds are stitching themselves back together you happen to notice a shadowy figure standing a few feet behind Vincent and there are glowing red eyes kind of peeking out from that shadow and you can hear an intonation coming from it as a hand reaches back and you you can hear kind of a <laughs> as claws slide out of this hand bow and arrow bow and arrow Labelli is the only um, one that can see it at the moment. I don't have any spells left, so I'm going to charge at it with my mace. You're going to charge at it with your mace? Please. Okay. Roll me... Um, let me see here. Roll me a dexterity check. One second, you can grab my dead. Yep. And take all the time you need. That's a 13. It's a 13? I don't think it's good. Ilardis, Yuki, and Hig, 
you see Labelia drop Gabby and rush past you. Absolute murder in her eyes, pulling out her mace as she does. Rushes past Vincent and Nico just as this claw starts to come down. And a moment later, you just hear, <coughs> and Labelia freezes. Labelia is currently being pinned with this claw embedded inside of her, but if she hadn't have stepped in the way, it would have hit Vincent. The claw has punched its way right through her, and as it pulls out, it is dripping in her blood. And there's something else in her, in the hand. It's almost like this pearlescent, uh, pearl opalescent shimmering color. As it rips her soul out of her body. And you just hear, fuck. And Labelia's corpse drops to the ground twitching. And that's where we're going to cut session off. Excuse me? <laughs> I don't suppose you'll give me that few seconds to at least death warn her? So I have some news for you guys. Unfortunately, this was Labelia's last session. Yeah. Sorry, Wait, what? Guys. Yeah. But what? Yeah, Labelia is leaving. Uh, uh, Jules Stein is officially leaving the party. No! Sorry, guys. Yeah. So, um, because there were only a couple of you here today from, you know, our regulars. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a proper chance to say goodbye, so today is a bit of a shorter session, so you guys can do that, and we can either do that here on stream, or we can do that um, in voice chat off air. Which would you guys prefer? I think off air might be better. Jewel Stein should choose. True. Eh, it's up to you guys, but I wouldn't mind off air. So, we are going to cut our session here for today, um, as we leave Labelia's broken and bloodied corpse lying on the street. And we will pick up the debauchery tea party in two weeks. That is going to put us at... One moment, please. April the 10th. Just after your birthday. Day after my birthday. Cool. Nice. So maybe we happy can... birthday. Yeah. Happy happy early birthday. Uh we will see you uh I guess the day after your birthday. Uh for those of you that are watching the stream, thank you very much for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this. I know it was a, it was a lot more role play heavy, but uh again, we hope you've enjoyed this and uh we've enjoyed bringing it to you. Um thank you very much as always. And uh we will see you on the 10th uh, for the debauchery tea party and we'll see you on I guess Wednesday for the idiot book nook um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it straight we're not going to raid anybody today um, thanks for coming